as we continue our study in 2 John, we find 2 John chapter 1, verse 1, The elder unto the elect lady, and her children, whom I love in truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. And we've gotten into the one, two, three, four, the fifth word of this entire study. And we're talking about election. You need to go back and follow the videos and the audio, audio lessons. As last time we talked about election for the Jews. What election, the, uh, the definition, you need to go back and you need to follow up before you go any further. Don't jump into this message halfway and then, you know, carry on the doctrine and say, I said something I didn't. You need a full picture. Now, this week, we go into part B, the church. As we talk about election, because there is a false doctrine out there by Calvin and Calvinism. We talked about that. You got to go back. We can't take our time to review when there's a video available to you. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 3 and 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I receive, how that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture. And that he was buried, and that he arose again the third day according to Scripture. Jesus Christ is a recompense for all sin, for all men. See John 3.3. 3, where Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. 2 Peter 3.9 2 Peter 3.9 You need to get all this. It's very important. As we continue, I told you we're going to do this study like you're a newborn babe, a refresher for those who are uh, grown. 2 John has a lot of meat in it. In 2 Peter 3 9, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his own sins. Salvation is based upon today in the church age only by Jesus Christ and you're purged by Jesus Christ now there's something more as we studied last week a the Jews we saw that salvation was primary to the Jews and were, the strangers were allowed but under the church we see something Romans 10 9 and 10. Romans 10, 9 and 10. And as you study the tribulation in the book of Revelation, you notice at one point the church is gone, and then the focus takes upon one group of people, the Jews. It's a time of Jacob's trouble. There's 144,000 that are sealed to the 12 tribes of Israel. There's Moses and Elijah. But look at here in the church age. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Now thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Again, it's Jesus Christ. But jump down to verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, the Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. 
So now we have something that's different in the church age, in the election. There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. As a matter of fact, when you get saved, you're not a Jew or Greek. You are the bride of Christ. You are a Christian, a born-again Christian. So how is the election? What is the procedure for the church? Romans 10, 9, and 10 again. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And there are tons of people that will confess Jesus. I've dealt with many of them. Jesus this, Jesus that. They even use Jesus as a curse. There are churches that will sing hymns and songs about Jesus. There are people, oh Jesus, my sweet Jesus. And, and there are people out there, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And Paul says there's another Jesus. There's another gospel. There's another spirit. And it's not just because you can say Jesus Christ out of your mouth. Let's read the rest of the verse. And shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. you got to have confession of mouth and you got to believe in heart. Your soul has to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your mouth has got to confess it. And I tell you, anybody who out there who claims to be saved, or anybody who says they're saved, and does not proclaim Jesus out of their mouth, I'm judging things now, not people. I call the question your salvation. Because if you can't talk about Jesus, and you can talk about the world... I wonder which side you're really on. Verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, not the head, not mama, not the church, not baptism, not membership, not works. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And don't tell me someone saved and they can't witness Jesus. That's all you're going to want to do. If, if, you, if the love of God is placed in you, and love comes from God, for God is love. I'm sorry, but that's the scripture. That's the truth. I love you enough not to lie to you. Faith and belief in Jesus Christ is the election in the church age. Obedience. What is the obedience? The law, if you if you gone back to the to the video before, was obeying the Ten Commandments, the statutes, and all the law, and, and this Leviticus and, and Deuteronomy, and put a battlement around your roof and cover your poo poo when you go to the bathroom outside, and uh, if you touch something unclean, why? And, and you know, this this rules and rules and rules. What is the obedience? I don't have a verse here, but I have a verse. <laughs> I'm going to write it down. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 8. Do you mind if I write this down? Ephesians 2.8 says what? For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Read Romans 6.23, the gift of God is Jesus Christ. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So what is the obedience? The finished work of Jesus Christ alone. And nothing that you did, no baptism, no merit, no, but Jesus. Only by Jesus. So the church, Jesus Christ recompenses for all sin, all man. There's neither Jew nor Greek after salvation. It is by faith and belief in Jesus Christ. The obedience is the finished work of Jesus Christ. 
And then the will of God and all that Christ commands you to do, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. See, you got to open up your big mouth for the Lord if you love him. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You get a Christian that does not want to, you know, fight sin and doesn't want to, get, you know, give in and give up and put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, then we call into question. Obedience. Well, I got saved. That's not all there is to be now. You're not a, there's no couch potato Christianity. But, but that's not what we're talking about today. Now, if you remember, if you reviewed last time under the Jews, what was the name for the Jews for the election? You remember? It's under Abraham. What is the name under the church for obedience? And it's not your church name. It's not your pastor. It's Jesus Christ. And only Jesus Christ, the name above all names, the name that every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And by the way, Jesus Christ, if you check Matthew 1 and Luke, it's 2 or 3, I forget what it is now. Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, and I can go right down the line. Election. Number 6. Obey God. God chooses you. You become elect. Now, how do I obey God in the church age? Jesus Christ is a recompense for your sins. Faith and belief in Jesus Christ. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Remember what we read in, uh, oh, uh, where did we read that? 1 Corinthians 13, 15, 3 and 4, about that was the gospel. Let's go back and read that. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's go back and read that because it's important. 3 through 4. Now this is the gospel. I deliver unto you first of all that which I receive. How Christ died for our sins, number one. Number one of the gospels, Christ died for our sins. According to scriptures. Now, there's a lot of religious men out there who died, but not according to scriptures. That what weeds out the Savior from the, whatever you want to call them, the phonies, the false prophets, the false preachers, the false everything. They did not die according to scriptures. That's not it. That he was buried. They put him into the tomb. That wasn't even his own tomb. All right, number two, he was buried. And he arose, number three, he arose the third day according to Scripture. Now, I'm not going to be ugly. I'm not being nasty. I'm not picking on no religion. But you can go in every graveyard where every pope has been buried, and you're going to find his bones. You can find the bones of Stalin. You can find the bones of Buddha. You can find the bones of any man on this planet who professed to be a Messiah, professed to be the way, professed to be, you know, the guiding light, he professed to be whatever to be, to have all answers of the beyond. You can find their bones. It's there somewhere. You cannot find the bones of Jesus Christ for he's been resurrected. He's on the right hand of God right now. So election today is obeying God in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Now if you're trusting in baptism, that's not the way. If you think your church membership, that's not it. If you think your mama saved you, that, no. You think Mary said, no. You think you're a good little duber? No. That's not going to do it. That's not. You will not be elected by God.
Only obey, obey God only, and God chooses you on the merit of His Son, and you become elect. That simple. You go to Washington, D.C. You go to whoever you, I don't even know who you go to, but say, listen, I want to run for the president's office. Okay? He'll give you a checklist. He'll go through the things and check everything out. If you do everything that the law says and you fulfill the law and the office of the president to run for a candidacy, and then you can be now elected by the people. Your name can go on the ballot because you've done what the law says. You've done what the rules are. The law and the rules of God in the church age is Jesus Christ. Once you choose and you fulfill only by the blood of Jesus Christ, only by the merit of Jesus Christ, then God says, okay, now you're in the ballot. You're elected. Letter B of election by Jesus Christ, you are chosen by God. Not the law, not the rules, but by Jesus Christ. Now, election today is solely on Jesus Christ of Abraham. There are some Jesus Christ out there, and there will be Jesus Christ to come afterwards, but they are not the seed of Abraham. You need to check his genealogy, uh, Matthew chapter 1, and Luke chapter 3, I believe it is, or 2. You need a sinless, non-male producing seed. I'm talking about the virgin birth. You need the Jesus Christ who is God, and God is Jesus Christ, no matter what those people will tell you when they come knocking on your door. And we'll talk about them later in this book. The election today is solely on Jesus Christ, of a, of, who is of Abraham, and his finished work according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, and Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 which Jew or Greek or Gentile can get into this by Romans chapter 10, verse 12. The obedience is when one puts his faith in Jesus Christ. Only by Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I've got to keep stressing only Jesus because I don't want you to think anything else will get you in. You say you keep pressing because this is the only way. The election today in the church age, not the tribulation now, please. If you hear this visit, if you hear this message and it's the tribulation, the church is gone, you are in another dispensation. Do not believe what I'm telling you. Only the church age. Jesus Christ has not raptured us yet. We have not been raptured. We have not been called to heaven. So today the election is based upon Jesus Christ. And listening to this video right now, if you go into this 18 minutes, you are now accountable. You have no excuse. I have given you no excuse now to go to God and say, I never knew. Now, am I a nice guy? You cannot go about your sins. You cannot go about your living and then go, oh, I can get out of hell because no one ever told me. I just told you. When you choose to do what plan God approves. Now, what is the plan that God approves? 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. How does God approve it? Let's read it again. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. According to the Scriptures is God approved. That he was buried. And he arose the third day according to scriptures. That is God approved. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is according to the scriptures and is God approved. And it will get you elected. You don't become elected because God chooses to elect you without, you know, just you. Okay, you're going to heaven. That's it. And you, you're going to hell. No. It's based upon your free will. Of receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. When you choose to do what God approves, 
then on your obedience, that's the only thing you really have a part of it, is your obedience, your free will, you become elected of God. Your obedience is, yes, I'll receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. Disobedience, well, yes, I'll do baptism. Yes, I'll do membership. Yes, I'll do tithes. Yes, I'll do works. Yes, my mama did it for me. Yeah, yeah, whatever. How do you go to hell any way you want? How do you go to heaven? By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is based upon your obedience in God's plan of salvation. The free will that God's given you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can receive Jesus or you, can, you don't want to receive Jesus. Not receiving Jesus Christ in the gospel, you will not be elected. I said yes. In April, in 1987, I said yes to Jesus Christ in the gospel. And God said to me, you're elected. Now you may not be able to remember the day that you were saved. That's okay. But was there a day that you asked from your heart and spoke from your mouth, Jesus Christ to save you? Was there a day? Maybe you can remember the day, the date, and maybe the time. Mine was afternoon. I was saved at 773 Broad Street Extension in Waterford, Connecticut, in my grandmother's house, my grandparents' house, right at her coffee table in her living room with, with Brother Joe Caswell, who led me. I remember that. I remember going the next day to church and telling the pastor, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I went up before the church, and I, had, I told the church I was saved. I went home and told my father not to go to hell. I was already witnessing. And then, within time, the pastor set it up. I was baptized. And I was knocking on doors. I was passing out gospel tracts. See, the works came afterwards. They didn't come before. Choosing to rebel against God's salvation, which is Jesus Christ, God does not elect you, but rejects you. Turning from Jesus Christ in the gospel is God's rejection of you. He's not going to elect you if you refuse Jesus Christ, his payment for your sins, Acts 20:28. 20, Why would God elect somebody based upon the rejection of what him, he did, and what his son did for, your, for you? That sounds stupid. Because if God elected you according to the election of God by, by the, the Calvinism, why would God need to come down this planet and live 33 and a half years? Why would Jesus Christ have to be put to the views and put to the rejection and put to the cross and put into the grave if God already predetermined who would be saved and who wouldn't be saved? Why would he do that? It would be a waste of God's time, a waste of God's effort, a waste of God's body, a waste of God's blood, a waste of time. And God doesn't waste time. And it would be a waste of the Bible because why write about Jesus Christ? Why write the four Gospels? Why have Paul telling us everything, what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to live as Christians if God already elected us and it doesn't care anything else about anything or anything? You're saved according to God or you're lost according to God. Then you don't have to do nothing. A Calvinist person does not have to witness because why witness? I preach out in the streets. If I was a Calvinist, I wouldn't have to preach on the street. God already knows who's saved. God knows who's already lost no matter what. I can just sit back and watch television and not read my Bible. Because there would be no need for a Bible, according to Calvin, because God already preconditioned no matter what. But if the election is by 
Jesus Christ, then we would need four Gospels on what he lived, what he said, what he told you to do. Then we would have four Gospels accounts of his being be beaten, brutally, uh, brutally uh, handled. Then we would need four Gospels about him being nailed to the cross. We would need four Gospels about him being buried. We would need four Gospels about him being arose from the grave. And the, the angels would say, he's not here, he is risen. And that would show that you would have a free will to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts chapter 16, and to be saved. And then Paul would write to us and tell us what we need to do after salvation. And then God would told us in Mark chapter 16 to go on the, on the world and preach the gospel because it's based upon Jesus Christ and not man. See, election would make you lazy. Election would make you Bibleless. Now, already I said this, I'm going to say it again, and as far as we do as election study, we're going to say it and keep on saying, for knowledge, F-O-R-E-K-N-O-W-L-E-D-G-E, -E -E. for knowledge, say it with me, people, for knowledge, say it again, for knowledge, say it again, for knowledge. Election is based upon foreknowledge. God already knew. God knew already that on August 3rd, 2013, at 8:10 p.m., I'd be doing this message. God already knew before the foundation of the world on April 1987, I would trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. God already knew that you'd be listening to this message. That's foreknowledge. God never, never in his life ever said, Stiley, you cannot have the gospel. Or never he said, Stiley, you got the gospel. No. On April 1987, they came to me with an open Bible and said, this is the way. Do you want it? I said, yes, I do. And when I asked Jesus Christ in my heart, Romans 10, 9, and 10, and confess Jesus Christ, that's the day I became elected. God already knew the need, salvation. He knew we were going to hell. The needy was men and women. When? Before Genesis 1, 1. Now, the key words in election, if you need to know this, you need to write this down. Here are the key words that always follow the election. Ready? Elect. Election. Chosen. And chose. And always, what's that for? What's that, what's that F letter? F, uh, F word? For knowledge. We've got a lot of study we're going to do before we get just on election. We've got at least two more pages. All right. God chose you since you made yourself a candidate. I'm going to keep on using myself if you don't mind. On April 1987, on the Saturday afternoon, God said, Stiley, I choose you. Why? Because you asked Jesus Christ, my son, into your heart. You're chosen. By obeying the rules and by the right name, Jesus Christ, I didn't pray Buddha. I didn't pray Muhammad. I didn't pray anybody, Mary or anybody, but Jesus Christ. The Jesus Christ of the Bible. The Jesus Christ where God approved. The Jesus Christ where it says according to Scripture. The Jesus Christ that died. The Jesus Christ that was buried. The Jesus Christ that arose. The Jesus Christ that thought of me on Calvary's cross. When I received that Jesus Christ who is God and who is the Son of God, John chapter 10 verse 30, God said, all right, you're elected. 
Obedience and belief in Jesus Christ makes you elect. I'm the elect. Thank you very much. Today, I'm elect of God because of Jesus Christ and only because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was of the seed of Abraham. That was Jewish. And that's what we talked about last time. Jesus Christ obeyed the law 100%. I violate the law every morning just like you do. You obey the law. I keep the law. No, you don't. You're a liar. You violate the first commandment of all the Ten Commandments that there is every single morning you get up. You say, well, how do you do that? What's the first commandment say? God first, right? Exodus 20, go back and read it. If God is to be first, before you open your eyeballs, you're to thank God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice it. Oh, alarm clock. Oh, okay, get 10 more minutes sleep. You violated the Bible. You did not praise God. The fact is, you woke up this morning. Did you? Oh, come on now. Don't get pious with me. The first thought you had when you woke up was God. No, it was. I don't even believe. Upon coming out of the consciousness of sleep, you thought of God. Well, that's the first commandment. There's a lot of Christians out there who violate the commandments because they say, Oh, it's Monday. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Jesus Christ became the perfect way of salvation, meeting all the requirements that we could not. Thou shalt not covet. Have you ever listened or watched an ad on the TV or radio or the newspaper or a billboard and not say, ooh, I want that? You never told a lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness. You were the perfect child. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. You want me to go on? I am neither Jewish, nor was I able to obey the complete law without error. And I'm talking about me or you. Jesus Christ is God's salvation plan. And that's the plan you need to receive. That's the plan that you need to believe on. If you believe in anything else but Jesus Christ, you need to get down to your knees right now and you need to repent. You need to ask God to save you in your heart and you need to confess with your mouth. But maybe you're not saved. Let's go to John 3.16. John 3.16. I'm going to tell you something about John 3.16. I quote John 3.16 all the time on the street. Well, it's a simple verse. Everybody knows John 3.16. Well, maybe. I'm going to read, read John 3.16 to you. And I'm going to tell you something about John 3.16, okay? We're going to break it down. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Can I be reverent for a minute? According to John Calvin, the hell with John 3.16. <gasps> Why would you need John 3.16 according to John Calvin? God already predestined me to be lost or saved according to Calvinism. You are elect according to God and nothing else. Then you need to erase John 3.16 out of your King James Bible. If you're a Calvinist. John 3.16 disproves John's Calvin, John Calvin's notion. Why? Let's break it down. For God. That's the source. 
God is the source. Like, in the beginning, God. Oh, look at that. It's not evolution. Evolution is the pollution of a man's mind. John 3.16, the source is God. Let's go further. So loved. You ever say, Stolly, don't you ever... <laughs> I break down the verse as far as we can break it down, as much as we can break it down, till we can break it down, till we can learn all what the Bible has to say about it, okay? You know, you take one, you take one book like Second John, you know how long we're going to take to study it? I'm in no hurry. This is what God told me to do. Now, so love, what's that? If for God is the source, what is so loved? That's the motive. That is the motive. The elect. Let me, let me, for God so loved the elect. Is that what it says? What is that word there? I hope you're in John 3.16. Let's read it. Ready? For God so loved the elect. That's not what it says. Let's spell the word out. Okay, ready? The John 3.16. W-O-R-L-D. Can we spell elect, please? E-L-E-C-T. Are they the same? No. For God the source so loved the motive, the world. That is not even saved people. That's not Jews. That's not Gentiles. That's the entire world. That verse there, John 3.16, it's written to everybody. If you were to start in St. Louis, draw a, draw a line all the way around the east and come back to St. Louis. And then St. Louis, draw a line all the way north, come all the way around, back to St. Louis. Now everybody in that scope of those two lines, that's what John 3.16 is written to. I can take John 3.16 go on the streets of Daytona Beach. I can take John 3.16 go down to Mexico City. I can take John 3.16 and go to uh, Poland. I can take John 3.16 go anywhere in Africa. I can take John 3.16 and go to China. I can take John 3.16 and go to the Antarctic. I can go to John 3.16 and go to the North Pole and find no one there. There's no elves or Santa Claus up there. The USS Nautilus proved that. There's no Santa Claus. Sorry. That's extra. So you see by the word world, that disproved. Why would God so love the world? We're not finished. If there was a truth that God had to elect people. John 3.16 does not say elect. It says the world. Every. That is any man. Now watch this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever... Match world and whosoever. You know, before you're saved, you are whosoever. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Now let me run over to another verse. Revelation chapter 20. I'll show you something. Revelation chapter 20, and time is just eating up. And pray that God will give me more time to get this finished. Revelation 20, verses 15. Match John 3.16 with Revelation 20.15. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. In John 3.16, whosoever believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ shall not perish. You are, before you are saved, before you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are a whosoever. Even if you deny Jesus Christ, you are still a whosoever. Because in the day you take your last breath, you still can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, even though you rejected him one, two, or three times, or four times. 
or how many times. You still have an opportunity while you're breathing to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, to be a whosoever, to be have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If not, if you die, then the whosoever be put into hell, the lake of fire. Now, the whosoever, in John 3, 16, has the capacity to say to, that God is telling you, I want you. You have the capacity to say to God, I want your son. God says, I want you. You say, I want your son. And you have a, you have a way to say to God, I want your way. Truth in life. John 3.16 violates Calvin's thinking of the election. The world and whosoever are the two key words of election and election. Anybody, anybody that is living, that is been born of a woman, John chapter 3, Verses 3 through 5, I'm going to let you read that since we're in John 3 again. Has the capability of trusting Jesus Christ as their Savior. It's sorry that many and most will not. For broad is the way that leads to destruction. And narrow is the gate that leads to life and few that go therein. This puts no restrictions on man and his free will, the world, and whosoever. Whosoever buries Calvin's notion and it offers it to all. Listen, from the highest authority that's in the world today, whether it be a king or a president or whoever, to the lowest guy who is living in a gutter that is naked and has no food and is malnutritious from, from those two sides can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. It's not predetermined by God. It's based upon free will. Again, the correct election or the correct, the correct biblical election is not God pre-damning some and saving others at his will. No. Election is a plan of salvation foreseen by God to man and man's selection or free will. Now, I'm going to go through things here that I'm going to have to trust you to look up yourself. And I think, you know what? I think we're going to call it quits right now. We're going to get, to get into next week, Lord willing, next time. Elect and the word chosen. And we're going to look at six chosen of the Bible. We have ended election of the church, part B. We're going to look at chosen and we've got another page and a half to do. But you need to get this straight. You are never preconditioned by God of your salvation. Never. Your salvation is based upon your free will to say yea or nay to God and Jesus Christ. And i got to say Jesus Christ who is God and God who is Jesus Christ. John chapter 10 verse 30. Because we're going to get into a bunch of people that are going to say that Jesus Christ is not. God. And we're going to see the warning that John gives us about those morons and idiots and whatever you want to call them. Because anybody who says Jesus Christ is not God is a moron, a fool. He has denied God. He says there is no God. Oh, I don't say it. We believe in Jehovah. Yeah, but Jesus Christ is God, and you say he's not God. So you have said, according to was it Proverbs 53, verse 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Well, we believe in Jehovah. Yeah, but Jehovah is Jesus, and Jesus is Jehovah, and you can't have half a God. you got to have the whole God, or no God. But we're going to close right there. 
as we get on. Thank you very much for listening. Get these videos out to other people. Get them to hear them. And, and I pray that these things will be rewarding to you. They'll be exhorting to you. They'll, they'll help you out and aid you as we continue on. For Jesus' sake, I pray and bless you. Bless this, this time of study we've had. For Jesus' sake, amen.